Hey everyone, Pastor Stan again, bringing you another message from the Word of God, the Bible. Today we're going to talk about something I think is important, certainly is uh, in organized religion circles. When will Jesus return? When will Jesus return? A thousand years from now? Next week? Can we know approximately when he will return? So here we go. Today's scriptures, uh, 2 Thessalonians, verses 1 through 12. 2 Thessalonians 1 through 12. Hear the word of the Lord. The Apostle Paul writing. Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how we will be gathered to meet him. Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Don't believe them even if they claim to have had a spiritual vision, a revelation, or a letter supposedly from us. Don't be fooled by what they say, for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God, claiming that he himself is God. Don't you remember that I told you all about this when I was with you? And you know what's holding him back, for he can be revealed only when his time comes. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly, and it may remain secret, and it will remain secret, until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Then the man of lawlessness will be revealed. But the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles, and he will ever and he will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction, because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived, and they will believe these lies. Then they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing the truth. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. My friends, since Jesus left the earth and ascended to heaven, many false prophets and teachers have predicted when Jesus will return to earth to set up his 1,000-year reign before the final judgment. Literally, thousands of books, maybe hundreds of thousands of books, have been written and millions of dollars made trading on Jesus' name. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 36, However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. That's a pretty closely guarded secret, I'd say. This is why the Apostle Paul's writing is so important to us. About the Antichrist, Paul writes, He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God, claiming that he himself is God. Now, before Jesus returns, the Antichrist will proclaim himself God while sitting in the temple of God. My friends, there is no temple of God in Jerusalem. There is no temple of God in Jerusalem. This means a temple would need to be built before the Antichrist could sit within it and proclaim himself God. This means the whole rapture doctrine is false, as well as the the entire Left Behind series. Now, parts of organized religion have the rapture doctrine written into statements of faith so that I could not become a member of their walled church unless I believed it. Unless I believed this, it would disqualify me from their building church membership role. Yes, as if uh, that's what saves you, getting my name on the roll. Some people, however, some people would say that. That's right. Then as some have asked me over the years how it is that so-called religious people could believe things so obviously false and anti-scriptural. 
<laughs> that, always, that always cracks me up, that, that question. Yes, how, how is it that so-called religious people could believe things so obviously false and anti-scriptural? Now, Paul once again explains this by writing, This man will come to do the work of Satan, the Antichrist that is, with counterfeit power and signs and wonders. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction, because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. So God, the God, will cause them to be greatly deceived. And they will believe these lies. Now, my friends, that is not a good thing. But that's what happens when I reject. If I reject Jesus, God will make me, make me, cause me to worship that which is not a God. And I will absolutely, totally believe it with all my heart because I've rejected Jesus. Some of those things are you will worship this rock or this piece of wood. <laughs> it just seems so ridiculous to me. But anyway, people will do it because they rejected Jesus. If they really love Jesus, then they would do what he said. That's how we can tell that organized religion doesn't love Jesus. Because if they did, then they would do what he commanded them to do. And uh, stop building their own kingdom here on the earth. Taking the money that they put into their building, which is really a part of the old, old covenant, that is Jesus has uh, made obsolete. They pour money into that and let the poor starve. And then justify it by saying, well, they can just pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Or they can, if they really wanted to get a job, they could get a job. All these justifications for them not to do what Jesus says, which, which proves they do not love him. So that's how it is people can uh, believe the lie. <laughs> that's why they can elevate their statement of faith above what the scripture says. They reject Jesus, and God uh, says, okay, now you're going to believe the lie. Now you're going to believe that if you just get your name on the church roll, you'll be saved. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's so hilarious. But, uh, yeah, th but that's what the Scripture teaches. Reject Jesus, and here's what God is going to do about it. And it's not going to be good, that's for sure. And the rapture doctrine is one of those things. Uh, those who hold fast to the rapture doctrine, that w before this great judgment of God is poured out on the earth for seven years, let's say, uh, that uh, he's gonna, God's going to resurrect us from the dead, and we're going to meet the Lord in the air, and we're going to not have to go through the tribulation period and be a witness for him. But... A uh, big uh, uh, problem with that is uh, that's not what the scripture teaches. <laughs> that's the big problem. And the rapture doctrine that we, you know, we're all going to be raised and miss out on the judgments of God during the tribulation, that's a relatively new doctrine. That's uh, a, a very uniquely uh, American doctrine, of course, right? What, what do Americans do? Well, if I get an owie or this hurts or that hurts, I go to the doctor and get something to fix it immediately because we don't like pain. So how convenient that I would be able to escape all the judgments of God poured out on the world instead of remaining here and being a witness for him. Quite convenient that uh, this American doctrine, it's pretty obvious. It seems to me that God is Making them believe it. Making them believe it. That's right. And they will defend it. I mean, they will get in a fight, fist fight with you. If I say, you know, that's not scriptural, they're ready to throw down right now. Right now, throw down. Well, why? Why can't we just talk about it? And then if I say something like, well, show me where it says that in the scripture, then I get some kind of if and then and 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 and, you know, like I'm on a episode of Hee Haw or something, because I have no idea. They can't look it up. They're just spewing their statement of faith, which they have elevated above the Word of God in the Bible. 
So God causes them to be greatly deceived. And there are many, many, many such doctrines like that in the organized religion church today. The Lord causes them to believe the lies because they have rejected his son. And this has been happening ever since Jesus' ascension to heaven, way, way back in the first century. That's right. The Antichrist has been around a long time. Satan has been around a long time. Let's look at uh, John 1, 1 John verse 4, verse, 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. John writes, but if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. So you see, the spirit of the Antichrist has been around basically since people have been on the earth. Always trying to turn us against the only living God. But if someone is a teacher, is a preacher, is a pastor, but does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that he came and he died on the cross for our sins, that one day we will be raised from the dead, and only the Father knows when that day is. We can't rush it along. We can't do anything to make it happen. Then, uh, then they're going to find out that uh, we don't know... Uh, we can stop building our kingdom here. <laughs> we can stop building our kingdom here and start using the money that God has given us not to build a, a monument to ourselves called the church building, but instead to help the needy and the poor, which is what Jesus has commanded us to do, and not hide behind some kind of, well, they just need to, uh, the homeless just need to get with it, you know, or or the sick or the injured or whatever, you know, the poor. They just, they, if they want a job, they can get out there and get it. Just, you know, it's justifying my bad behavior. And actually believing it. Because I've turned away from Jesus at that point, And God is making me believe the lie. So if I don't uh, acknowledge that Jesus came in the flesh and died on the cross for my sins, ascended to heaven, and will return someday then uh, that person is not from God. And I don't have to listen to that person. In fact, I want to stay as far away from that person as I possibly can. From the first century all the way to this day, the spirit of the Antichrist has been working. This is how it is that supposed religious people can believe such outrageous doctrines as if they are in the Bible. Reject God's Son, and God will believe, cause me to believe the lie. And that, my friends, is bad. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want God in heaven to make me believe the lie. Because that might very well mean that in the end, uh, there's not a place for me in paradise. So then, uh, when will Jesus return? When will Jesus return? Well, here's when he's going to return. He says, Jesus says, that the angels don't, of heaven don't know. He doesn't know. Only the Father knows. So that means Jesus will return when the Father in heaven says so. At the right moment, at the right time, then Jesus will return. Because that's what the Father in heaven has planned. So, what am I supposed to do in the interim? What am I supposed to do? I attended church where they're, you know, we're on the brink of destruction all the time. All this doom and gloom or all this scare tactics. You know, you don't want to leave your family here behind you. So you got to witness, witness, witness. And also make sure you pay your tithes, which is the old covenant, which is no longer in effect. All of these things that people, they take and they, they elevate above the word of God. It reminds me of uh, when Jesus had a run-in with the Pharisees, and and uh, he's you know they accuse his disciples of not washing their hands in the customary way before they eat, and Jesus said, "Well, how is it that you set aside the word of God so that you can follow your tradition?" Well, of course they were quite offended at that, and he said, uh, "Jesus told them, you say that uh, instead of honor your father and mother." as it says in the Ten Commandments, 
then uh, you don't have to do that if uh, they're a part of your ties, right? As long as the church gets your tithe, they could really care less about your parents. So they set aside, they elevate the tithing doctrine above honoring your father and your mother, which is also uh, reaffirmed by Jesus in uh, the New Testament. Right? They set aside the word of God so they can believe their doctrine, which benefits them. So what to do, what to do? Well, here's what I'm doing. Work, work, work. Work, work, work. Work for Jesus. And be his witnesses here. Be his witness here on earth. After all, it could be another thousand years before he returns. So I'm not going to be sitting around waiting for him to return. I'm going to be out there being a witness for him. And I'm going to separate myself from people who believe the lie. Well, what do we learn today, preacher? Well, here's some things that I've learned. Number one, only the Father in heaven knows the date of Jesus' return. Only the Father in heaven knows the date of Jesus' return. Number two, the temple in Jerusalem must be built for the Antichrist to sit in it to proclaim himself as God before Jesus returns. Could be another thousand years before Jesus' return. So I am going to keep on witnessing for him. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for sending Jesus from heaven to earth to die on the cross for my sins. Help me walk closely with you and continue the work you've given me. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Well, the peace of God be with you, my friends. As always, like and subscribe to the channel. Send this link of this video to somebody who might need it, who's confused about this point. And may we all walk in the truth of God, not being deceived by those who take advantage of us or allowing ourselves to believe the lie. All right, see you next time. God loves you and so do I. Bye-bye.